Hello and welcome to Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you. In our last episode, during Stonehenge, the Dwarven Paladin began to make a name for himself by hunting forest bandits in the regions around the city of Suno, in the Swadian Plains. As we pick up, we find Durin recruiting more warriors for his band and then heading off to Suno in order to sell the spoils of victory. On my way back towards Durham, I happened across Count Mershad's party, chasing after a wee little spot of forest bandits himself. I decided to go back and check it out just to see if he needed a hand carrying all the booty. <laughs> In a skirmish like this, really the only thing to do is to take a little bit of pot shot practice with the old bow and arrow. I don't know if I've managed to mention this before, but I'm pretty much the worst shot with a bow in the history of all of Dwarfdom. And I could use all the practice I can get. Uh, well, in that case, the sun was in the eyes. Yeah, I've got to excuse that one. Really sure who I was shooting at that time. Oh, that was a pretty good shot towards a grouping of them, trying to just sort of happenstance an arrow into something alive. And then of course I ran into my own men, so might as well bring out the sword and shield. Which apparently I'm not much better with than the bow! Anyway, I suppose you could say the Count had it all well in hand. <laughs> Why are those goofy elves always saying myocardial? It's got something to do with a heart attack or something, I think. Forest bandits never rest, day or night. They're kinda like the varmint Kong that way, eh? So this is a little skirmish. I'm not going to show um, all of these little skirmishes in their entirety, but I would like to point out, you know, this is how you set your little battle array, get your guys up in a little bunch. It's almost meaningless this early in the game, but I use it later in the game, I guess to compensate for how bad I am at the personal combat part of this game. <laughs> In my defense, I do a little bit better if I have a two-handed weapon to do the ride-by swiping with. Uh, I much prefer having a hand weapon to having a lance, because the lance has this huge cooldown period. It just cuts down on the amount of mayhem you can really achieve. Uh, plus, again, if you get an armored horse later, you have your shield and your own armor and your horse armor, you can really just wade into the enemy and then it becomes easy, even for a bloke like me, to just sort of beat the living daylights out of most of the critters that will come after you in this game. Now, Fantasy Calradia has some things that you gotta be careful even at high levels and big armor with, but anyway, I just wanted to make a few comments. Um, like I say, most of these little skirmish battles, I'm probably just gonna edit through, show the highlights, maybe catch an instance where I actually hit something. That would be awesome! Prepare to die. So I lost a lot of my lads in the last battle. It's just a few of them left there up front. Mostly just have to rely on the elven archers there in the back from now on. At least until I can recruit some more. Look! 
I hit one! <laughs> So this level, I uh, crank up my horse archery skills, hoping maybe someday I can hit something. Anytime I go past deer, I always like to go visit the tavern. They have some of the best ale in the kingdoms. But this time, I ran into a character that turned into one of my best friends. Bunduk, of the Guard of Deer. Greetings there, brother! Here's to the doom or downfall of all hardborn lords and maids. <laughs> what do you say that for, sir? It's a long story. But if you get yourself a drink, I'll be glad to tell you. A sergeant I was, in the garrison here, Durham. Twenty years I stood guard for the city, taking many a hard knocking, many a tough fight, till they appointed me a snot nosed downy lipped princeling barely out of his mother's cradle, his commander, the garrison. Come upon me standing watch atop the tower with my crossbow unstrung, on account of the rain, you see. Can't have the cord loosened, but the prince snot nose tells me an unstrung bow is dereliction of duty. Says you'll have me horse whipped. Uh, something in me snapped. Walked off me post. Now I'm here getting drunk, <laughs> and the devil take tomorrow. Well, if you're looking for work, I could use experienced fighters. Or oh, you know. Well, that's a sight better than swinging from a gibbet for desertion. <laughs> you won't regret taking me on, brother. I'm a dead eye with a crossbow. Beautiful weapon. You can right punch through a nobleman's armor and spill his blue blood upon the ground. And I've trained more raw recruits than you had hot dinners. Beg your pardon. <laughs> but don't toady to the highborn. Good man, we'll treat you with the respect you deserve. That's good news. But I'll ask for one last thing, Captain. I have a woman here in Durham. Tavern wench, she says she has my child in her belly. I want to give her some money before I leave. For the child, you know. You think you could spare 200 dinars? Of course, here, 200 dinars. Give her my regards, lad. <laughs> right. Give me a few moments to prepare and I'll be ready to move. So, Bunduk. Bunduk is from the original game. Uh, cheap hire, if not a free one. All of the new characters in Fantasy Cal Radio seem to come free of charge and you just pay them weekly. Level 9 guy. Pretty decent stats. Uh, his training, you see here he has. And then, of course, all of his weapon skills are over 100. Which, for a low-level guy, is, he's really nice to have. One of my favorite character conceptions in the game, too. I'm kind of keen on the whole not liking the Blue Bloods aspect of Bunduk. <laughs> I remember those early days as times where I had to learn to make hard decisions. Coming out of Talbur one afternoon. Recruiting some extra men after losing a few in raids against the forest bandits. We run headlong into a band of shadows from the pit of hell. Well, I knew we weren't likely to be able to take them, so I ordered a retreat back past Talbur, but they were too fast for us. So we drew lots, and a couple of the boys stayed behind to distract them. Bandit called me a coward to my face. Well, I had to do something or there was going to be a dissension in the ranks, so I looked him in the eye and I said, If you think you can do better, you take whatever men you want and face them down yourself. And any of you lot that wants to go with him are welcome to go. Well, <laughs> that shut him up. I'm pretty sure Bundit would have gone all by himself, but knowing he'd have to take care of those other men, lead them into battle, knowing they'd die under his command, well... It was a little bit more than Bunduk had the stomach for. Unfortunately, we ran into another band of shadows, and after that, a wee bit of trouble with an extra band of forest bandits, but eventually, we made our way to Kilraden Castle, and were able to wait it out. But we lost some good men there, or at least, I never saw them again. It's a hard, hard life, being a commander kind of thing that makes you lose sleep at night. That's the price of being a leader of men. 
I thought I was in real trouble, but it turns out the lack of honour among thieves left them chasing me one by one and I was able to pluck off the small bands. I guess they thought we were just a bunch of fat merchants, easy pickings for their bows, but <laughs> they learned different. Since there was only five of them, I decided to sit up here on the hillside and then go down and try me luck with the sword. There's one down! There's a second one got it to the chest! Looks like one of them died was I wasn't looking and there went number four! And finally, this poor job. Hey lads, you got to give me a little bit more time, I was just warming up here! Just wanted to give a quick glimpse of the troop breakdown so you know what we're working with here. Even your life. It's a slightly more formidable band this time. Not so much on account of the numbers, but on account of the two deserters uh, on horseback that I didn't count on. Turns out the boys handled them just fine. Went after this fella thinking I might take him out, but it took a bit of a whiff there, yep. And the boys knocked him down before I really could even put my hands, so turned my attention elsewhere. One of my lads was out here all alone. I had to poke a couple of these fellas in the back to get their attention. And the rest of the lads came to his rescue. After that, I played to the good lord for a little bit of healing. Strength and protection. Because we knew that more of their brothers in arms were coming hot on our tails. Everything has a price, even your life. So, thought I would set my men up on that first hill right there. Got my infantry set up just at the foot of it, and that way the bulls could shoot up over their heads. Anybody that was left, I would sick the infantry on, and I thought I had it all lined up here. You see the bowmen are moving a little to the right, so I thought, well, I'll shift the infantry a little to the right too. But the archers just keep moving! And so finally it dawns on me. I've stuck them behind this second hill! <laughs> so I call them back over here to the first hill, but by then it's really too late, but there's only three men coming anyway. So I sick the infantry on them. Thought I'd jump down here and give them some healing, but these little cowards in the back <laughs> kind of blocked me from healing the men at the front. And the whole thing's over with before it can even really get set up, so oh well. No harm, no foul. We'll have our pay, or we'll have our fun. So when we turn to face these fellows, they're over to the next hill, so I'll bring my archers up here. Just at the crest, it's not the best position, but... See, they're gonna creep up on me just over this little hill. Got my infantry set up right to my left here. Ready. 
Steady, I tell them. And then at the last minute, I charge them in. Oh, to give this little fellow a love tap. And then I go to finish this little fellow off. But I miss his head. So he proceeds to make me pay for it. But then the fellows take him down for me and... Well, that's the end of that story too. Well, after that spanking, their buddies took to the forest with their tails between their legs. And I continued on with my men to Suno to have a few pints and regale the ladies with tales of our exploits. It's getting a little late now, as a matter of fact. Thanks again for watching Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you very much.